Bitcoin, we have a problem. <clears throat> well, we shall see if we do or if we don't towards the middle and end of this video. Welcome back to the Crypto Bliss Show. I'm Kiara Ducas. Thank you for being here with me today, guys. I needed to catch up on a video here with you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, very, very grateful for all of you. Thank you for being here, guys. I can see you guys really enjoyed my meme video. Uh, definitely very, very much. Go watch that video if you haven't yet watched it. I'll leave it pinned in the, co in the cards above for you guys. But yeah, man, we are definitely on a very, very uh, interesting path in crypto right now. So make sure to stay tuned and we shall see where we're going. Now, today, in our Morales Money bubbles we are currently doing some pretty amazing stuff I see that we have absolutely incredible pumps happening all over the crypto space guys and this is just day two you know while bitcoin sits and kind of falls just a little bit we're actually seeing such an incredible uh, pump in the crypto so right now we're seeing avax up near 19 percent say 26 and a half 15 for solana 30 for aptos uh, and we'll talk a bit about some of these things here, guys, and we may take profits on one or two of my trades. So we'll have a little bit of a look together. We'll see. Uh, but render, yes, pound, look at these things, guys. These things are pumping 20%, 12%, up to 26% up here today, guys. So that is really looking very, very healthy for us in the space today, especially considering we're sitting at a 2.7 uh, trillion dollar market cap we're up 2.5 percent even after the little bit of a fall yesterday um, the trading volume has come down just ever so slightly to about 171 billion dollars and i mean look at this we've got memes just continuing to pump cd5 tectrum great i do own some of each of those guys um but today wow mango 71 percent radio wow 90 book of me she's guys things are pumping out there Bitcoin is currently sitting at $68,160. It's up only 0.3% for the last seven days. $1.346 trillion market cap. Ethereum is sitting at a 3,682 price and currently sitting at a $444 billion market cap. Tether at $103 billion market cap. BNB $95 billion. We've seen BNB pump 26%. I actually wanted to get into a BNB trade about a week ago, but... Uh, I didn't I didn't take it because it had been pumping just ever so slightly already at this point. Um, now Solana is up 32% for the week and Cardano is down, XRP is down, Avalanche is up 40% for the week and Avalanche is now sitting at $60 a piece, guys. Wow. Um, Toncoin is up 32%. I will be doing a video very very soon about that one and uh we'll have a look at whatever else we need to do in a short little moment here guys look there are some green protocols that are busy happening here i mean near protocol guys i mean i remember talking about near protocol with you guys at like one dollar one dollar fifty uh so hopefully you guys have made some good cash there and internet computer down a little bit aptos been talking to you guys about for some time filecoin doing great guys cosmos definitely cosmos you can make lots of ethereum with on cosmos so you know you're making some of the second best crypto in space so why not fearing greed index today sitting at 81 we've had a lot and it's not even anywhere near the all-time highs we'll have a little bit of a look at this um in a moment but essentially now you can see is extreme greed at 81 yesterday was extreme greed at 83 last week was extreme greed at 84 you know so that we are seeing some in increased uh levels in the fear and greed index i mean there we had a spike all the way up to 90 on the 5th of march uh, but if we go and put out our max here we can see that generally when we do eventually get up to these all-time highs uh, you know kind of above the 90 uh to 95 levels really guys we are then looking for some sort of pullback and retracement in the market so you know it does happen and we just need to be very cognizant of that because at the end of the day um you know the fear and greed index from a an understanding perspective of where we at on the fear and greed index can indicate to you whether you should be buying or selling now i guess you guys will be able to decide that for yourself and if you want to know more how to buy well then hit my private link down below and you guys can get yourself 
up to $30,000 deposit bonus there. With my BitFlex, you can get up to $88,888 bonus there. So let's move on, guys. I've got some cool stuff to share with you on Twitter uh, or X. And essentially, please follow me on my CryptoBus uh, Twitter page, my X page. I do share people's posts. I do share my videos. I do share some content here with you guys but um, I'm not as active but I'd love to be more active at the moment but I am running a couple of businesses and I need to pay attention there as well so um, I love just doing these videos for you guys so please subscribe to the channel that would be much and truly appreciated so I'm going to show you a few things here from Bitcoin Archive so shout out to Bitcoin Archive uh, but basically what's happened is uh, Bitcoin ETF uh, trading update sailor to buy another $500 million in Bitcoin plus all the news you have missed. So go check that out if you want. But basically every dip is an attempted shakeout. Just hodl. I agree there 100%. Now you can see here the ETFs did 65 billion trading volume so far in March and uh, that smashes February's total volume in just two weeks, as you guys can see there. Um, so you can see, because we are only on the 16th of February, uh, and yesterday was the 15th, so that was the two-week mark. Look at February. We've munched February's kind of $42.3 billion. I mean, look at this, guys. This was telling us that uh, GBTC equity was pushing up, and look at this that's pumped out here now. Ibit is literally the biggest buyer of Bitcoin, and then next is the Fidelity one and Grayscale as well. So, you know, those are your three biggest players in the space. You definitely need to keep a very close eye out for them. Now, the thing about this is that we're actually seeing Bitcoin ETFs update Thursday. You know, the market goes up and down. Um, but really, are these guys getting ready to take profits right now? You have to ask yourself, like, they've just been going on a buying spree. And they know that they haven't actually adjusted their portfolios. But is are their portfolios big enough to adjust in the space of just the short amount of time that they've had to invest? Even if it's 2x, I'm pretty confident to say that I would note that these institutions are not stupid, of course, guys. BlackRock saves the day again with the $345 million, which lifts the net flow from a negative to a healthy $133 million. Literally every single day there are inflows of a couple hundred million to a billion dollars was one of the, the biggest ones last week. And, you you know, essentially we're just on an upward trend in terms of how much capital is coming into this space. I mean, BlackRock the other day did 849 million themselves, guys. In fact, there you go, 1.2 billion. So, you know... The ETFs by flows, if you guys recognize this, so BlackRock's 2x the flows of Fidelity, okay, literally, okay, Fidelity are 3x the flows of ARK, literally, and ARK is 6x the flows of Van Eck. Okay, I don't know, yeah, where is it there? Yeah. So, you know, all of this is pretty interesting and it shows us that we are on an upward trajectory here uh, for this beautiful crypto space. So, you know, if I was you guys, I would just say to you, hold tight, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Have some popcorn, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and let's move on. Year to date, 2024 uh, category ETF flows. This is from Eric Altuna. Shout out to Eric Altuna. Nice look at 2024 year to date ETF flows by category. US stocks and Bitcoin are stories of year so far. Corp bonds are up there as well. Notable Japan and EM both making rare appearance. Gold ETFs in the in the gutter despite seeing all time highs is also interesting. So you can see here the spot Bitcoin X GBTC has seen 23.6 billion dollars go in. More than that already, guys. We're literally on the verge of doing some crazy stuff. Intermediate duration bonds, tech sector, growth factor. I mean, look at it. How it just smashes everything. Spot Bitcoin. Okay. Um, uh, small cap equity treasuries. Look at this, guys. Crypto is literally in the top space all over there. Now, that is the most beautiful uh, thing that you could look at. And if you look at this, 
uh, minus is um, in the negative territory is China equity staples, tips arc. Uh, utility sector, financial sector, energy sector, cash like treasuries. So it's very interesting. And gold commodities, guys. So all of these are outflows in these sectors. And as you can see here, gold commodities, um, you know, obviously people are selling. And where's that money going? Essentially, you can see here when the money is going, and it's going to the spot with Bitcoin ETFs. So, you know, this is a very, very good chart to be looking at and understanding how the market is thinking and working right now. And yeah, this is the biggest thing that we have ever seen in our lives, guys. This Bitcoin is going to become money. Whether you like it or not, it is on its way to doing that. So MicroStrategy's historical volume chart is quite the sight. It traded more than Amazon yesterday with 8 billion. Um, outrageous activity relative to its history. The spillover effect from the spot Bitcoin ETS is underrated part of this. The equitized BTC is... Uh, BTC complex is doing 20 billion in day uh, per day in volume. I mean, look at this, guys. Look at the volume that was being bought of Bitcoin. Look at what, look at what this has happened. Uh, you know, historical volume chart is quite the sight. So you know, this is uh, MicroStrategy's historical volume chart. Look at this, guys. Absolutely ballistic how it's just insanely broken through and i think this is why michael michael sailor was building the micro strategy um effort with bitcoin because he knew bitcoin was going up so like they'll never come back down to this level again guys they're just on an upward and onward trajectory and that is also because they have converted themselves into a bitcoin strategic in institution and entity so you know, that is very, very important for, for you to understand. Now, I'd like to show you one or two more things before I get into some charting, guys. Because if you guys don't believe that we are about to see um, the crazy, crazy, crazy uh, cycles of the absolutely incredible bull cycle we are about to experience, whether it's in uh, all the cryptos, all the altcoins, etc. This is the crypto total market cap, excluding BTC and ETH. You guys see my chart here often, uh, my total three chart, um, and you guys know that I'm expecting this chart. I said all the way up to four trillion, but actually I'm expecting it to hit at least eight trillion dollars in this cycle, um, at the very, very least. And we're on our way up there, guys. We're at sitting at about seven hundred and forty billion at the moment. We haven't reached our target here just yet. I think we will because we've seen huge buy flows here, and if we look at the, the Bitcoin uh, dominance chart, we have actually seen that Bitcoin dominance is, uh, is is having some of its liquidity. And that's perhaps some part of why people, you know, some of the OGs in the space believe that they can make massive gains from selling uh, their Bitcoin into altcoins. So you can see here the volume of sell pressure at this area. Um, and very interesting. I mean, we're in an up would wedge here okay now on the bitcoin dominance chart you can see that and essentially we're kind of we're going to have to break this apex at some point um we're either going to creep up very gently up here to this 56 level because obviously the etfs are bringing um capital and liquidity into the spot etfs but it might be interesting to see that some people are obviously on the way up through this process of taking profits um you know, and look at this this RSI we're breaking out of here. So for me, um, you know, even though we're pulling back down here, I think we might just end up, you know, pushing up once again, maybe perhaps creating another high over here, which would be very, very interesting to see. Now, um, as you can see here, this is the 2021 section. Boom, boom, sideways. Uh, so pump, dump, accumulation. Um, accumulation as well and we are here okay this is where we are here today because the same thing has happened uh, pump drop accumulation accumulation and we are currently sitting here on this specific chart on this total altcoin market cap as you guys can see we haven't broken this all-time high here um so there is still room to see 
the altcoins break its all-time high and that's exactly what is about to unfold and once it does guys we are going to see something like this i mean and this went all the way from down here at about 50 billion dollars uh to one trillion dollars that is a 200x guys what? a 200x and i honestly this cycle i'm actually expecting way way more than that so let us go back to our chart and let's chart this out for us so i mean that's from the bottom essentially right from the bottom a 200x which would give us a 2000 percent guys I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we'll see this. Uh, yeah, this is a little excessive, to be very really honest with you. So I don't know about this. Um, let's see here. No, sorry, I went way too much. There you go. Yeah, actually, there you go. So between seven and eight trillion dollars, guys. So I might, you know, more stuff I share with you and I show you guys, the more you can realize. So that's not really actually unrealistic, um, you know. So we could see a two thousand percent pump. Uh, plus, guys, like this is a very very different cycle, and I'm going to show you something right now, um, in a short moment that is going to tell you why it's a very important cycle. However. In the meantime, please come over if you are enjoying the video, subscribe to the channel if you are watching this video and have not yet subscribed. Um, and truly appreciate all of you guys. You know that it helps the algorithm. We're in a bull cycle. Uh, I would love to see this channel and this community grow. I've got a very cool video coming out for you later this evening um, and tomorrow afternoon. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let's get to this, guys. Um, those are going to be some really cool videos. So hit that notification bell so you know when that comes out. Now, let's pull into um, this video here from Fred uh, Kruger and Bitcoin's risk reward ratio is the best it's ever been and there's only one threat. Now, let's listen to what Mr. Fred Kruger actually has to say here in relation to exactly what it is that I was referring to you just now and how we are in a potentially continuating pattern and we are literally only just getting started. We haven't seen institutions, we haven't seen insurance, uh, we haven't seen many institutions, we haven't seen much, we haven't seen any insurance, we haven't seen um, policies, funds, all kinds of things come into the space yet. So listen to what Fred Kruger has to say, and uh, let's make our decision right at the end of the video. In the end, there's one, one, one ring will rule them all. As they, you know, as they said in the, yeah. the Hobbit. Lord what, of the Rings, yeah. yes. One ring to rule them all. How yeah. confident are you that Bitcoin is never going to zero? 100%. 100% confident. What, what narrative creates a pullback? You know, we had the Terra Luna collapse. We had the FTX scandal. What sort of narrative can you envision that creates a major pullback in Bitcoin or... Is it a macroeconomic development that could perhaps impact Bitcoin? What do you think is likely well, or possible think, to to derail this this current uptrend? I don't I don't think there is anything, and the reason is is you know going back to the something you talked about at the very beginning is these power laws, right? If you take the if you take the Bitcoin price and the time since the first Bitcoin block was mint mined, right? Which was in January of 2009. And you look at those, both of those, those numbers on a logarithmic scale. You will see that we get an absolute straight line. I mean, there's variation around that straight so, you line. Know, Fred, but we're, we're going to pull up the charts that you posted showing yeah. uh, Bitcoin as a power law. So break that down for us. Talk us through that. Okay. So, um, so this chart was, uh, this chart was discovered by an astrophysicist um, named Giovanni. And uh, when you're looking at things in astrophysical time frames, you need to look at things that are very small or very small, and then things that are very big, like the distance of the, the size of the Milky Way, right? So you tend to look at things on a logarithmic scale. Um, and 
the way of representing relationships in this so-called log log space is very natural for physicists. And so it's, it's not, it's not crazy that a physicist would have first seen this, um, this relationship. So if you look at that graph, um, and you look at the price of Bitcoin in the logarithm of the price of Bitcoin, and you look at it in relationship to the logarithm of the time elapsed since the Genesis block, you will see that it's a straight, it sort of wobbles around a straight line right from the very first year of Bitcoin to now. And that straight line means that um, because the straight line is in log space, in log log space, right? That means that the actual price of Bitcoin is roughly time to the power six. Okay. Now you were sort of say, well, that's exponential. It's not exponential. What it is, is it's a polynomial, right? It's a six power. So you know what a parabola is. Parabola is like X squared, right? A cube is even more faster. The cubic is even more fast than a parabola. It's X to the cube. Well, this is X to the power six. And that's roughly how much Bitcoin price goes up in time. Uh, and I can put that in complete perspective uh, because I was asked to explain this. Somebody was asking me this earlier today, and I was like, well, let me give you an example of what that means. We've been in Bitcoin. Bitcoin has existed for 15 years now. Where will Bitcoin price be if the same pattern continues in another 15 years? Will it be double the current price? No. It'll be two to the power six, the current price, which is 64 times as high as it is right now. Right. So that. Did you guys hear that? Well, let me give you a little bit of excitement here while. Uh, calculator. Calculator. Okay. So we'll come back to the video because I just want to finish this one, this bit off here. Uh, but basically, just round Bitcoin off to 70,000 times 64 in 15 years' time. We could expect, based on previous history, that Bitcoin would presumably be $4.5 million a Bitcoin. So to those that think Bitcoin is currently expensive today at $70,000, in 15 years, your $70,000 could be worth $4.5 million if you own one Bitcoin. So I'll minus the $70,000 for you. Okay, because that was your initial investment. So you take that out. Your profit would be $4.41 million. Do you see this, guys? This is what I say to you. Right now, Bitcoin, you know, is what it is. But eventually, when we do get to that kind of market cap, let's go and have a look at exactly what Bitcoin's market cap would have to be at that point. And we're talking in like 15 years. We're not talking about today. We're not talking about this cycle. We're talking about in 15 years. If you are patient enough to wait for Bitcoin to hit the four and a half, four million five hundred price, okay? Yeah. Bitcoin would be, there you go. So 65x gain. And that would only be an 88 0.5 trillion dollar market cap guys we've been listening to and expecting bitcoin to easily hit a 100 trillion dollar market cap that takes us to a 5 million dollar price guys that's not bad especially when you look at money flowing out of crypto i mean sorry out of stocks and gold etc and coming into um, bitcoin and the crypto spaces so you know there is a lot to say to us about this guys and at the end of it, I need to show you something here before we continue with the video, because what is difficulty? Difficulty is the measure of how difficult it is to find a hash below a given target. The Bitcoin network has a global block difficulty. Valid blocks must have a hash below this target. Mining pools also have a pool specific share difficulty, setting a lower limit for shares. Okay. So that's just the definition. Now let's go and listen to the rest of what Fred has to say about how Bitcoin will 
64 to 65 X over the next 15 years, guys. If you think Bitcoin's expensive today, try buying it in at the end of the cycle for a few hundred thousand dollars. Try buying it in 15 years for four and a half million dollars. Do you think you're going to be able to afford it at that point? I don't think so, guys. $70,000 is still very, very cheap. Buy, hodl, sit tight, store it in cold storage wallet, forget about it, and come back to it in 15 years. That's what a power law says, that if you double the amount of time, you get two to the power six higher in price. So 64 times higher in price. Now, that seems crazy, but that's exactly the what Bitcoin has been doing over the last 15 years. I mean, exactly. Um, so, so, in, so in 15 years time, Bitcoin at 70,000 times 64. I can't do the math in my head, <laughs> but that, that's, well, that's your price target. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it's around four to five, four, four and a half million, roughly. I mean, that's kind of what a power law says, right? So power law says you're going from 70,000 to four and a half million in 15 years. Now, again, you could sort of say, well, that sounds crazy. Why is it going so much? Well, you know, it's not, it's not totally crazy. I mean, the price of uh, Amazon has gone up a hundred times over the last, uh, you know, uh, the price of Apple computer has gone up a hundred times since they released the iPhone. That was one of my biggest mistakes, I think, was I, I bought shares of Apple when they released the a Apple iPhone. I sold them three years later. at the, it, the price doubled, right? Now, had I held them, I would have made 50 times more money than I had by selling them three years later, right? So you, you, you tend to underestimate how much these things can go up, right? Nobody thought that in Apple released the iPhone in 2007, right? Nobody thought that... <laughs> Uh, we'd be, you know, a hundred times higher in price than they were in 2007. It's just insane, right? But yet, um, these technological advances can move, they can move 50, 100 times over 20 years. And I do think we're going to go 50 times higher in Bitcoin over the next, you know, 15, 20 years. I do. And that might be it. You know, that might be more or less it. It may go up a little bit more than that, but... Um, but I do feel like that this opportunity right now, you know, over the next, let's call it the next five, 10 years is exceptionally good in Bitcoin. Probably on a risk reward basis, the best it's ever been, right? The best it's ever been. Shout out to Michelle and Fred here. Thank you for the interview. Truly appreciate that. Um, guys, now let's go and tackle our absolute Bitcoin chart, guys. If Bitcoin was to hit four and a half million dollars i think we would see absolute stars in everybody's eyes to be very honest with you but where are we today so let's have a look at our bitcoin bit stamp chart okay guys to be very honest with you we're in this cup and handle pattern i did say maybe we need a pullback maybe we get this pullback before the up to the 60k level we could essentially I think right now we're holding nicely above this. I would like to see us remain above the 65,500 level. That would be um, incredible because you can see that's where this candle went down to as well. So if we can remain above that level, I think we'll be safe for now. Um, and then we might just uh, position ourselves over the next kind of three, two, three weeks here. Um, well, essentially the um, Bitcoin hodl, the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin, um, halving is in one month's time in about 30 days time now because today's the 16 so it's around this time in one month so we've got pretty much four more candles here just to, to see before we essentially start to continue the rally to the upside so sorry four weekly candles so which means that the rsi could kind of pull down a little bit um your mvr we could kind of just get a little bit of a a little bit of a pause and your stochastic rsi could essentially um become a little bit overheated and start to just um cool off a little bit even though while we sit down um it could essentially pull down over here and then it's, and then make this absolute crazy next rally guys so for me bitcoin is going up it's a long-term hold it's the best asset that you can possibly hold uh, at this point and i'd actually like to just share with you guys 
um, on the daily time frame here because obviously we are rolling over guys you can see that that is very obvious right now so my first level is the green horizontal level there at the kind of the 60,000 level um, that is my first target for Bitcoin you can see even the RSI is a little bit over sold at the moment stochastic RSI the MVRV score is a bit over um, bought so we've had a bit of sell pressure in there but if we were to have our usual kind of 30 to 40 percent pullback where would that take us that would take us 30 percent would take us here to this level at 50,000 and 40 percent would take us to around this level here at 44 45 thousand dollars so don't don't believe that that's that's impossible guys because that's not impossible um, however, honestly, I would say that this is probably my line in my sand at 60k. I think at 60k, that would reset the stochastic, it would reset the RSI, it would uh, cool off the MVRV, we would find support on, a, on this beautiful 60k psychological level um, of where we really got up to initially here on the first um, part of this rally and then we kind of fiddled around that 60k level so that's my personal view that's my opinion i think uh, finding support on that 60k level is going to be crucial for us to have this decent pullback guys if you think you're going to get bitcoin at like 20 25 30k again i'm pretty confident that i can say to you based on history that that's not going to happen and especially based on the way that this is a very different and unique cycle where we have broken the previous all-time highs pre-cycle uh, pre-halving cycle so we are seeing something very interesting in the markets and you know you just need to stay very very vigilant at the moment because obviously there's a lot i did say to you guys that we are forming a cup and handle pattern um so yeah i mean just keep an eye out on that because there are so many things here that you want to uh, do and experience and those are part of them so Guys, I have very, very cool stuff to share with you in a short little moment. So right now, you can see here, this is the BTC dominance. If we kind of grind up here a little bit, which is still a possibility, you know, we still have a lot of inflows coming. I still, this is my target at the 61% level. That's really my target before we really see the true depths of the alt season. So is now a good time to still accumulate even though we're making some of these crazy pumps out here um, in the market with these 20 30 40 60 percent 300 percent pumps i would say yes um you know without this being financial advice i'm just telling you what it is i'm doing i've been in this game for now four years and i have been accumulating for four years so i already know what it's like to experience a bear market i bought on the way up in the last cycle uh, so I know all about just being patient in this game, in other words. And if you guys want to know more about that, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, let's get us some good action going, guys. All right, so as you guys can see here, here is my trade. It's dropped a little bit, but that's really not a problem at all. Um, I would like to see us, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, 60,000, that's my line in the sand. That would be a good area for us to pull back. And that kind of is the target of this rising wedge, which essentially, guys, as we all know, rising wedge is a bearish pattern. So we have broken, um, we have tested this level. So if we break this level, we're coming down to the bottom area of the wedge pattern here and plus you know if we're looking at this rsi over here it's a bit of a sell pressure to actually looks like batman wouldn't you say 
Uh, I don't know if you guys can actually see that Batman there, but yeah, I mean, some of my trades are in a bit of a loss, and some of them are heavily in a loss. I've been stopped out of a few with this, but I'm still holding strong in them. So Aptos there, you can see it's pumping now 77, um, uh, 77%. Um, then Bitcoin is up 461%. Arbitrum is up 30%. Uh, no, sorry, our weave is up 30%, Arbitrum is down 54%, and my ETH is down 36%, but I will add to my ETH position in a short moment. My GMX is down 56%, so I'll add to those three right now while they're in the depths of their, their books, but GRT is up 103%, Pixel is up 51%, that's a short position, um, Pith is up. 270 percent guys and solana is up 277 percent also so i hope you guys are really creating magic out there for all of us and yeah let's go and make some fun and have some good energy out there because essentially in the crypto space we are together you're sharing community you're sharing these videos with everybody we're all making money and together as a community we're growing the entire crypto space we're not trading against each other although that is the reality of the crypto space is that we do trade with people we don't know but if the more we build community like this together we can share thoughts we can share cryptos we can share ideas we can share projections etc so hope you guys enjoyed that content today and if you did make sure to subscribe to the channel give the video a taste of your love and truly appreciate every single one of you enjoy your saturday today love you all and we'll see you on the next